My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, we have adorned everything on earth. In everything on earth, Allah has put it into plan and shape in order to test them. To test who? To test us, the human beings. And to distinguish those among them who were righteous from the ones who were not righteous. Inevitably, we will wipe out everything on it, leaving it completely barren. Chapter 18, verse 7. This verse is indicating to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only created what you see on earth in such a plan, such an order, that it is fit for the test, like an examination room. This earth is also like that. Allah is telling us we have ordained, we've made it in a system that will cater only for the test. This is why we don't need at the moment to see Allah, to see the unseen, like the angels in the hereafter right now. Don't worry about that night right now. This is part of the test. So everything is hidden away. Now, if something is hidden away from you and you are only being tested, what's going to happen in the end, do you think? What happens? What's the law here? Allah has hidden all the unseen away from us. He told us that He has set this world in such a system that will fit your test. The test will end. What's going to happen after the test ends? All will be revealed. And the grounds of testing and the system which Allah has created, the laws which He has created to fulfill the environment for that test will also go. There's no longer any need for it. Therefore, it is understandable. When a person reads the Quran, as Allah says, the earth will therefore go. Since it's ordained for the test, it will go. It will no longer be here. There's no need for it to be anymore. Therefore, it will be destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa nufikha fi s-suri fa sa'iqa man fi s-samawati wal-ardi illa man sha'a Allah the trumpet will be blown and everything in the heavens and earth will die except whom Allah wills not to die. In Surah al haqqa when the trumpet is blown, the, the mountains, look at the description, the mountains and the earth soil and, and other things that are on earth, rocks, mountains, will be carried off. Humilat, be carried upwards. And if you are living and can see it, see mountains losing gravity with earth, they're going upwards. Fadukkata, dakkatan wahida. They'll be crushed, like all at once, as though a hand Lifts them up like that and then crushes it all at once, like one palm. It's like crushing something into the ground. That is the day when the inevitable event will come to pass. What is the inevitable event? The day of judgment. Allah calls it waqa'atil waqi'ah. Al waqi'ah means a thing that will definitely happen. Eh, the whole world and all of us are working towards it. That's the end. Everyone is working towards that reality. It is the day of judgment which will decide who will go where for eternity and there's only two places eternal happiness or eternal misery Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran when the sun will lose its light and when the stars will lose their position will collide with one another when the mountains will be made flat and equal in level. So the mountains are now different levels, right? So Allah says, Suyirat means they're made leveled. Leveled meaning with the ground. And when beasts or camels, camels that are pregnant, will drop their babies. The rumbling of the last hour is something great, enormous, huge, unbelievable. If Allah says it's azim, Something unbelievable. Inna zalzalat al-sa'ati shay'un azim. Why? Allah says. On that day, you will see every woman that is pregnant. Her baby will be dropped. She can't hold it out of fear. 
Every single woman that's pregnant. And you will find the people running around as if they are intoxicated, drunk, like a drunk person. But they are not drunk. But the punishment of your Lord is so scary and so hard. The ocean also will lose its balance. Imagine. And we all witnessed on television examples of the tsunami. That's only little examples. Allah tells us when the oceans really lose their balance. Big tsunamis. When you hear these things, mountains and earth lifted and crushed, the sun losing its light and power, the stars colliding with one another, this only tells you that there is a terrible imbalance happening in the universe, in the solar system, gravity, everything, as though everything is reversed. As though gravity is being lost and everything is being reversed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us, Behold, when the eyesight is taken to shock like lightning, meaning everything is taken away before your eyes like lightning, and the sun and the moon are joined or eclipsed. Allahu alam, is this on earth or is this on the day of judgment? I'm not sure. But man will say, where are we going to run away to? There's no running away. Where are you, where are you going to run away? You had a veil in front of your eyes. You couldn't see the unseen. Today, we unravel. We, were, we, we take this veil away. And now your eyesight is sharp. You can see everything. The whole humans and the animals will die. From the trumpet. Everything that hears the trumpet will die. The jinns will die. Iblis will be the last to die. But he will die. He will die by the destruction of the earth, of the, of the world. He will not stay until the day of resurrection. To, he, he tried to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to stay till the day we are resurrected. Oh my Lord, let me stay till the day they are resurrected, day of judgment. Allah said, You will be left alive until the known day. Some people say, well, how did Allah accept the dua of Iblis when he is Iblis? He did not accept his dua. He rejected his dua. Iblis wanted to live to the day of resurrection. Allah said, you will live to the last hour only. You are going to be destroyed with all, every other evil. That's when your time is. Because you are the root of evil. I'm going to destroy you. In one narration it says that the angel of death comes to take Iblis's soul out and Iblis runs to all the corners of the earth and he finds the angel of death there. And he dies. He's taken away. Iblis doesn't want to die. You see? He doesn't want to die. He thinks he's still got hope. And that feeling, he puts it... Or he, this is what he whispers into the minds of the human beings. Don't worry. You're going to live more. You've got long days to go. Don't worry. You're still young now. Person 70 years old says, you're still going to live. Don't worry. He's 80. You're still going to live. He's on his deathbed at the hospital. Don't worry. They say you're going to die, but there's still some hope. You're probably still going to live. Enjoy life. Have a little bit more of enjoyment. Don't worry about worship right now. Yes, the shaitan does that because that's his characteristic. And when the angel of death comes to take his soul, he runs away. He thinks he's not going to die. He thinks he can escape. Subhanallah. So when everything on earth dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys the universe. And then he says to the angel of death, take Jibreel alayhi salam's soul out. The, the heavens and shake and they say, Jibreel yamut? Jibreel dies? They are silenced and the angel of death takes his soul out. Then Mikael, then Israfil, then the angel of death takes his own soul out. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to address call out to the criminals of the world the, the, the tyrants of the world where are you? where are you O disbelievers? O you who challenged me where are you today? and then Allah says man baqi man baqi who is left? who is left? lam yabqa illa ana lam yabqa illa ana I am the only one left there's nothing else but me and Allah 
أنا القهار أنا الوهاب I am the overpowering I am Allah I am the everlasting I am the all-powerful أنا القوي المجيد أنا ملك الملك I am the king of all kings At that point, the Rasul Sallallahu tells us that people stay dead for only Allah knows how long. Some hadiths say 40. The companions who narrate these hadiths say, we don't know, did he mean 40 days, 40 years, 40 months? Allahu A'lam. But they stay dead for 40. وَيَغْضِبُ رَبِّي غَضَبًا لَمْ يَغْضَبْ مِثْلَهُ قط. Rasul Sallallahu tells us that our Lord will be angry in such a state of anger which he has never been before. Allah is angry, but he's not like our anger. In a manner that befits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not deny these words, for he said them, and the Prophet ﷺ said them. However, we cannot describe them. You know, when a father, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the best of examples. We're not comparing Allah to humans. أعوذ بالله. However, just to bring something, bring a metaphor to your mind. A father, out of his love for his son or daughter, when his son or daughter go wrong, they get angry. But this anger is not an anger of tyranny or oppression. It's an anger of love. It comes from love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is compassionate and merciful with His servants. So why? Why do we worship someone other than Him? He says, Oh my servant, I feed you, but you thank someone else. I clothe you, you thank someone else. You live on my earth and in my kingdom, and you worship someone else. Subhanallah. So Allah is angry. يَغْضِبُ غَضَمًا لَمْ يَغْضَبْ مِثْلَهُ قط, As the Prophet ﷺ states. And then the day of true resurrection comes.